Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venicia and this is the Wooly Worker Knitting Podcast and today you are joining me for episode 10 of the podcast. Can't believe we're already at double digits. It's been about five months since I started. Actually, fun fact, the six month anniversary of the channel will be on my birthday and I'm kind of maybe wanting to do something for that. I was thinking of a knit night where everyone could come in and uh, join me for a knit and chat. I think that would be really fun. So I'm trying to organize that um, and I, I will hopefully have more to say in the next episode. Other tidbits of admin, if you want to follow me on social media, you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram at The Woolly Worker. Same as here on YouTube. Uh, I hope that I'm easy enough to find. If you want to see some more behind the scenes on Instagram and also finished item photos, and also, if you want to see more information on my projects, I keep very detailed Ravelry project pages with needle sizes, any modifications, the size, the ease, the measurements of the finished items, the amount of yarn that I use. I mostly keep track of those things for myself, but I've been told that it's really helpful for you guys as well. And I also like to uh, snoop around and find other people's details on their project. So uh, always good to share that knowledge. Then what else is there to say? Today's podcast will follow the same format as it usually does. I will talk about what I am wearing first, which is a finished item. I will talk about other finished items. I actually don't think that there are any more. The rest will be works in progress. There's a few that you have seen, a few that you haven't seen. And then I will also talk about my very, very imminent plans in cast on. I have bought a couple new things of yarn and I have maybe swatched for a couple of things. So I will show that at the end if you want to stick around for that. But hopefully we'll have enough content at the start with all of my exciting um, works in progress. As always, thank you so much for your continued support and for continuing to watch the channel as it expands and grows. If you've been here from the start, then thank you so much. It means the world to me that you decided to stay and see what this channel would become. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love it if you uh, gave it a go and see if you like the rest of the content. And if you do, then please, you can leave a like on the video. That's always really good feedback. And if you have any other sort of constructive feedback on things that I can improve on or things that you'd like to see in future videos, I'm also very open to hearing those things in the comments. So don't hesitate to leave something there or private message me on Instagram. Okay, so I think that's it for the introduction. I always want to be like, let's go straight to the point because we're here for the knitting, not the chat. So I will talk about what I am wearing first. And as I said, it's my finished item. This is the Levitate Wrap by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This pattern was released as part of the Isiger Breeze collection, which was a collection from the brand Isiger that had, uh, I think maybe 10 designers came together and released some patterns, including, including Marianne Isiger, the founder behind the brand. She released the pattern that was released last, I think. This Levitate Wrap was released towards the beginning of the collection, I think. And if you've been on Instagram, you probably have seen it and you've seen a lot of the other items from the Breeze collection. Half of them are on my queue. I, I love the vibes it's giving. Most of them are quite beachy, summery ones. A lot of them are using Isiger Trio, which is a summery yarn that's made of like flax, linen, cotton, and rayon. And I used it in here. And then some of them some of the other patterns in the collection are using Isiger Trio, which is another sort of uh, thicker yarn. So I talked about this project before, if you want to hear more about it. I cast it on at the beginning of the month, on May 7th, and I finished it a couple of weeks later, on May 19th. It was really fast to do. I made mine on 55 millimeter needles. I think she recommends a 6 millimeter, but I liked the gauge that I was getting with this. This is made with Eco Soft, held with Trio, and the colors I used were um, 8S for EcoSoft and Chestnut for Trio. I love the fabric it gives. It's extremely soft, so next to skin soft, no itch factor whatsoever, and yet it's quite breathable. The EcoSoft is made of a cotton mesh net, and then al alpaca fibers are blown in it, so it's really light and airy. And the alpaca obviously gives warmth, but then the cotton and then all the linen and flax and everything gives structure. So I was saying before, I didn't really know exactly why, what was the point of holding the strand of trio with the EcoSoft, but it does give the garment a lot of structure 
and it doesn't stretch out or sag as much as it would otherwise, I think. Uh, and then the, this wrap has ties on the side, which, you know, to make a little knot and to make the double knitted ties stand properly, I think it's also nice to have some kind of strong strands in all of those fibers. I had knitted with the Eco stuff before when I made my Eclair uh, pullover back in mm, January, February, and I found it quite difficult to work with. I wasn't used to it. It was my first time working with it and with something like that. So it wasn't the most enjoyable, but I did find that you got used to it really fast. Like even by the time I was done with my swatch, it was fine or like it was okay. And then when I was knitting this, then I got reminded of the reasons why I didn't like working with this yarn, but I also got used to it by the time I was done with the, the yoke. This is a, a drop shoulder uh, construction, by the way, and it's basically a wrap that you then tie here at the bottom. There's a double knitted edge all the way here and also um, here on the bottom, as you can see. And then the sleeves, they're really nice shape where it's quite big at the start, but they taper down. And then to finish it off, you have a folded hem with a little pearl edge. And it's just a beautiful pattern that's full of clever little details like that. I found the pattern to be written really, really well with lots of tips. You know, it literally says tip, do this row tighter than usual because of this reason, which I, I appreciate so much when a designer does this. And I think there was one mistake for size medium where the stitch counts are off but someone mentioned that on their Ravelry so I just make sure to check that. I found the pattern a, a joy to work because it was very engaging, you just kept on having to change and do more things, it was easy enough. There were a couple parts where it definitely came in handy that I had done before, so for example doing a double knitted button band, I think that was really helpful to be able to do. Someone else on Ravelry has put amazing notes detailing how they did those tricky parts of the construction. Like you have to graft a double knitted tie at some point on the side because you start, you just do the tie separately and then you graft it on the card again. And the descriptions in the pattern are fine, but what someone has written on their notes is even better. So I'd highly recommend checking out their page. I linked it on my project page if you like travel there. And everything will always be in the description, by the way. I didn't mention in the intro, but uh, check the description. All the info is there. And if it's not, just message me or ask in the comments. But I really, really enjoyed doing this. So I made the size... Oh, I didn't actually say on my Ravelry. But I made the size small, which is supposed to give me quite a lot of ease. It's very boxy. Uh, so this is where my body is. This is where the extra is. I really like it. It's so comfy. It's so elegant. I love the sleeves. I think they fit me really well, like the length of them. And some people were complaining that the cardigan was a bit too cropped. So there's a tip in the pattern on how to increase it to get more length if you want. But I think the style of the cardigan is that it is supposed to hit you like right above the hip, uh, a bit under your waist. So if you were looking for some a longer cardigan that was like a wrap style, maybe just look for that pattern instead, instead of trying to change this one too much. Because if you increase the length, you also have to increase like the, the, the place where this is crossing would change if you kept on increasing lengthwise. So yeah, I didn't play around too much with that. I think I just increased mine. I just did a back and forth. So one knit, one purl one knit round, one purl round, to just make it like a half a centimeter longer. I don't know why. Uh, and in the end, I kind of almost wish I didn't do that because I was playing it so close with Yarn Chicken. I bought seven balls of the EcoSoft and I used 6.94 skeins. And that was including the fact that I did, I did a gauge swatch. So I'm really, really glad that I didn't need to buy more yarn in the end. And I have a half ball of trio left. I had bought three balls and I had what, a half left. So perfectly, it worked out really perfectly in terms of yarn. For the yarn chicken, I think the last thing that I was doing were the double knitted ties. So I was kind of in my mind thinking that if I was to run out of yarn, my ties would just be smaller and maybe I could block them out to be bigger. But I was also half ready to make a basket in an online shop, ready to buy one more, one more ball of the EcoSoft, but I didn't need to do that in the end. 
but I still did purchase that basket and I will show you when I uh, get to the end of the video, which I hope this isn't going to be too long. I can already see it's been a long time filming, but I really just can't stop talking about this wrap cardigan. I've been saying all year that the thing I've discovered I need more of are cardigans because I overheat a bit too much sometimes when I wear sweaters in the house and a cardigan is just so perfect to very easily breezily take off and put on and I also very much value comfort and like softness and I really don't want to to have something itchy when I'm just relaxing at home so I really like this. The only thing I still need to do with this cardigan I think is add buttons so the pattern is, again, not super clear about that. It does say that you need two clasps and it doesn't really tell you where to put them. But basically when I'm wrapping this cardigan and I tie it here at the end, what I wish is that there was something that was attaching this end of the cardigan. So as you can see, this is like the diagonal. So I need to put some buttons here and some like a clasp here so that I can keep those parts secure. Otherwise what happens is that this can get away from me uh, but when I'm just lounging around the house it doesn't bother me at all and I'm just wearing a top here underneath like a camisole I've been wearing this with a t-shirt I probably could wear a dress underneath I don't know it looks quite fluffy so I don't know if the look I'm going for is a summery dress in this but I could and yeah I this is probably my favorite piece at the moment that I've made like this I don't know this year this semester uh, I really really like everything about it and I highly recommend the pattern it was so much fun there was a lot of double knitting to do but because the yarn is so big and your needles are so big it goes really fast like it goes by much faster I think when I did mine I did the the, the body like the drop shoulder thingy I did the double knit button band and then I think I did like a sleeve or two and then I did the rest of the double knitting like you can basically pick up and do what part you want to do and then if you're worried about doing like too much double knitting or doing doing too much sleeves or too much flat knitting like it just do what you want to do it took a lot of time to block I think because of the content the cotton content of this but it's getting to summertime it's okay I was a bit sometimes I'm worried about my knits if I leave them wet for too long like drying I'm worried they're gonna start to smell but I've actually never noticed that to be an issue so that's fine it just took some time to to block the other thing to say I love the fit of it when I first hadn't blocked it I thought it was pulling a little bit at the like edge here on the shoulder you'll see in the close-up photos that I'm sure I've been putting every now and then the there's like a nice detail here uh, on the shoulder I thought that everything was a bit tight and I could feel it when I was wearing it I could feel there was something on my back almost like on my shoulder blades but then after having blocked it it completely disappeared so I'm really happy that I blocked this in terms of yarn substitutions I guess people could use other blown yarn like Senna's Garn Kos or drops air I think I've seen people do that and then if you wanted to you could also hold it with trio if you have access to it for that structure but if not maybe some like sock yarn to get like the nylon I'm just trying to think of, of what you could do if you didn't have access to those like Isagur yarns but hopefully with more and more people doing this project we'll be able to see more yarn options and combinations that you can do the other thing I want to mention about this is that um, the hardest part of this pattern was to do the folded cuff, I thought, because what you do is you have to like, you, you stop here, do the cuff, fold the end on itself like a neck edge that you would do, and then you, you knit it together with that. And so to do that, you had to pick up, you know, at the right space in this reverse stockinette, and you really have to stay on the same row all around, otherwise you're going to get your line like crooked or slanted. And I had tried to put a lifeline so that I would be able to see exactly what row I was on. But when I put my lifeline, the lifeline was showing on the stockinette side, on the right side. But the lifeline wasn't showing on the inside, which is where, what, what I needed to see to pick up stitches. So I don't know if there's a way to put a lifeline on the reverse side. It's probably what I would have done so that it would show like on the little pearl bumps. But I managed in the end. 
it just took a while and it was a bit fidgety but there's not that many stitches at the cuff because again it's like a big yarn and a big gauge so it's not like I was making a sock on tiny yarn with tiny stitches although the yarn was very fuzzy so it wasn't the easiest thing to do a folded cuff on and this is my first time doing a folded cuff but I love it I think it's worth the challenge and worth the effort and it gives it a beautiful beautiful result so I think I'm done gushing about this pattern. Uh, I will put here what the price ended up costing, uh, like what the project ended up being worth overall. Uh, the way I calculate this usually is that I calculate only like the exact amounts that I use. So for example, here the trio, I have a half ball left, so I'm not counting that. So, and sometimes I buy my yarn on sale. So I'm just using the price that I actually paid as opposed to like the retail price of what it is now, which is why sometimes there might be some discrepancies between what I show on screen and what you can see in your country or in your shops. But I just like to keep that information transparent and visible for people if you're interested to see the cost of knitting and the cost of some, some yarns. If you were interested in doing this project in the size small with the yarn that was recommended, here's what it cost me. Um, so yeah, I've been living in it since pretty much. My flat is north facing, so it doesn't get too, too warm. Even though it's being really warm outside this week, I'm still wearing this inside basically, and I'm really comfortable. So the words that I would use in conclusions to describe this project was that it was quick, satisfying, challenging, fitting, comfy, soft and light and yeah just really really happy with it. A total success, 10 out of 10. Would not change a thing if I made another one. I don't know if I would because I don't know if I need two pieces like that, like one is just enough in the wardrobe but if I were to do that I would just I guess make one in a lighter color just to have both options and I probably would be tempted to just use the same yarn because it was so much fun and I love the, 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 the playful combination of the white cotton net and the brown fibers and then the like dark brown marling that the trio gives. So I probably would just use the same yarn. Probably in the original colors it was like linen and 2S I think was the original combo. But anyway, that's it for the Levitate wrap and if you have any questions just let me know because I can talk about this pattern forever. Okay, the next thing then, that was my only finished items. Actually, I finished one more thing, but it's currently drying and I won't have time to do finished photos. So I will show that in the next podcast episode. And also I think that we just don't have time today. But I have done two things since the last episode. Okay, now we'll talk about the works in progress. My, the, the big thing that's been taking up all my attention lately is my test net. The deadline for this was supposed to be tomorrow, Sunday. But uh, thankfully the pattern designer has extended the deadline a little bit because it is an all over color works sweater. There were a couple of issues with uh, sleeve charts. So uh, yeah, it's very welcome that we have more time. This is for the Pictus Pullover by Tetis Litzak, Tetis Knit Garden. She has an amazing Instagram. I highly recommend you give her a follow because it is so pleasing to the eye. I wanted to make a point to show you the texture of this, like a close up of it because I really want to highlight like the realities of knitting and not everything is picture perfect. And I'm kind of like, I guess I want to hold myself accountable. Like I, I compare myself to people a lot of the time and I am aware with having a bit of an audience that some people might compare themselves to me. So I wanted to show that like, this is something that like I'm not the proudest of, but it's realistic. So I'll show you here on camera. This is my pullover and it looks fine on camera to be honest, like from far away. It's quite cropped, but it's going to relax once it's blocking. And uh, I've done one sleeve, as you can see, and it's just got a bit of ribbing. The sleeve color work, it doesn't look like it at first, but like you separate for the sleeves, then there's a bit more color work at the sleeve, and then you stop, and then it's plain stockinette. So I've done all the color work that is required now, and then I'm just finishing the sleeve. I'm really hoping to finish it maybe this weekend, and then block it over the week. I'm really, really, really excited to block this and see it transform because I'm worried that the color work is not the neatest. And again, I will show a close up later because you can't see it too much. And I don't know if I mentioned last time, but I did pick up at the neck and I made an I cord edge. So it's rolling in a little bit here, but I will hopefully block this out. 
So I picked up stitches all around the neckline and then did an applied I cord. And I made mine a four stitch I cord. You can pretty much do like a three, four or five stitch I cord depending. And I did it on the same needle size that I used for the color work here. So on three millimeter needles. And I'm really happy with that neckline. I think it, it keeps the same vibe as the original where it's like, it's not ribbing basically. And hopefully it stays strong like that and doesn't roll in too much. If it does, I could rip it out and do some ribbing instead. Basically what I had said in my previous video was that uh, mine was rolling. And at the time of saying that, the pattern was just saying to, to not do any finishing. But since then, the pattern designer has noticed that a lot of people were rolling. So she suggested now in the pattern that you can do an eye cord or some ribbing. So it's good. That's what testing is for, is for noticing issues. The designer didn't experience that issue with her sample because she used a different yarn maybe or different tension, depending on how tightly you cast on at the neckline. But then other people like me use different yarns and then they run into some problems. So uh, the other problem with this pattern was at the sleeve. The very interesting thing about this is that there's a different underarm chart for every size. So there's um, here I've got like a couple things of color work between the flowers. And then for my sleeve, this is the part that was quite tricky but satisfying is that um, you want to follow like at the underarm here the pattern kind of continues seamlessly into a flower um and then there's also like some little dots here so i'm not showing it too too well here but once i finish this all and sh uh, model it and take some photos and videos hopefully by the next episode i'll show some close-ups of the underarm so you can see what i mean uh, and so that's something that the designer is still kind of thinking about and whether she's going to simplify it and, and suggest that you can just like do some dots and you don't necessarily need to, to make the pattern follow. I think it's, it's like a masterpiece. This took so long and it was very effortful. The color work wasn't the easiest because in my mind it wasn't particularly memorable too too much. It was a bit intuitive, so I could kind of foresee where things were going, but I, I still had to look at the chart all the time. And then there were a few rounds every time that had you catch floats, which can slow you down. And it's just that there's just so, so much of it. But then by the sleeves, it was easier because there was just a couple of flowers to do and then you can keep doing in stockinettes. So it's a welcome addition. It's a welcome surprise that there's no color work at the sleeves. Although one tester has done color work at the sleeves and I think she said it wasn't too hard. So if that's something that you wanted to do, then you can do that. The yarn that I used for this, I mentioned in my previous podcast, but I used my contrasting color, the gold. It's a cone of merino from Wooly Knit in the color Cossetcha Gold. And I'm really happy with that. I, I had it in stash already. So um, I had original plans for the color for the main yarn in the color contrasting color, but then it didn't work out. So I had to use stash and I was happy to, to have things that were suitable. And my main color is just this kind of like really neutral, kind of like gray beige, light gray uh, yarn, which is I bought from the um, Perth festival, like wool showcase that I attended in February. And the makers are Hawkshaw Sheep, and I'll leave a link below to their website and to that yarn if you're interested in uh, hearing more about it or buying yourself if you're um, in Scotland or in the area. Another modification that I did was that the original pattern has you do wrap and turn, and I did German short rows. Honestly, it's just because I don't think I've learned how to do wrap and turns, so I just like to do what I know. Um, everything else I did according to the pattern. The sleeve length I really like, it. they're quite tapered, like there's a lot of decreases all around and then you do some ribbing and I'm really happy with that. I tried it on when I finished the first sleeve and it was great. Honestly, like my honest thoughts about this pattern is that I'm, I'm ready to be done with it. It's a fingering weight sweater, it's color work, it took a very long time and my motivation has run out and I'm just so excited about other projects like this Levitate wrap that I had cast on. I've cast on something else that I'm really excited to show you that's also taking up all my interest. So I just want to be done with this project and also I just want to put it in water and soak the hell out of it and get all this color work to even out. 
and then I'll be happy with it. I'm happy with it now, especially when I show it on camera, as opposed to when I'm staring at it, working on it. Tete has just released a podcast episode, she has her own podcast, and she showed her sample in her latest episode, so if you want to go check that out to see it in more detail, then go for it. I highly recommend her podcast, she's very interesting and calming, and I really like her aesthetic, obviously. So I hope that my thoughts don't put you off this pattern or her patterns in general. It really is just my own impatience, and maybe my choice of yarn is not giving me the best results right now because I think both yarns are likely to bloom extensively according to my swatch so especially that grey yarn because it has spinning oil on it so it, it really is going to expand and smooth and even out and fluff up and everything so I'm, I'm really really looking forward to that because right now it's a bit of a mess so next episode will be very exciting <laughs> okay the next project then is something that I cast on I think when I finished my levitate wrap I was like well there we go as a reward you can cast on something new I had shown the yarn I think in the previous episode and it was to make a Leon sweater by Petite Knit as you can see it's a striped sweater and I had bought yarn in yellow no not yellow white of white and lilac and I have made a lot of progress and the reason for that is is that it was extremely addictive to do the yoke. I think I did the yoke in like two days because it was nothing like I had done before. It's a continu contiguous sleeve. So it's kind of all down in the round. It doesn't have much working flat, not like a drop shoulder, but it's not a complete raglan either. Ninette's Amy, she is making, she has made the poppy tee, which is also by Petite Net. And from my understanding, it's the same construction. And uh, the way that Amy described it is that it felt like picking up stitches for the gusset of a sock. And I agree, it's exactly what it felt like. So I will show you what I've got. Yes, I have done both sleeves and the yoke. So I'm just working on, working on the body now. And I've, I've picked up the neck as well. So I'll show you what I mean with the, the sleeves. This is what it looks like. So it looks like a set in sleeve, doesn't it? You've got like a nice little detail at the back here with the increases and this is where you pick up stitches so it, like a sock gusset it's really neat the yarn is going to relax a bit more when I um, wash this and then the sleeve had some nice decreases all the way down to taper it I'm really proud of my method of doing jogless stripes I think Petit Net suggests a method in her pattern but I went and looked for another one. So this is it. I'm sure you can see a difference in texture, but do you see a difference in the stripes? So the texture issue, I'm sure, is going to even out with blocking, but the stripes are really neat. I think the problem as well is when you're doing decreases and jogless stripes, there's always potential for the jog to happen on a decrease, which could mess up things. I've done... Um, I've carried the yarns all the way like across so I didn't have to have a million ends to weave in so I'll show you what that looks like so here's the back of the work and you can see whatever color I'm not using I'm carrying up and I try to stay loose by doing that so I wouldn't bunch up and it's fine I think I've done a good job I'll link the video that I use for the jobless stripes in the description or on my Ravelry if I haven't already um yeah, so I'm loving this. I'm using a uh, Sandness Garn Sunday held double and the colors I'm using, I said before, were Kit 1015 and then like Dusty Lilac, which is like the Petite Knit colorway, which I think is getting discontinued actually, alongside a bunch of other Petite Knit colors. And this is where I messed up because I only ordered three balls of the purple and... I think six and a half of white. I had some in stash. And I realized I may have done my math wrong because I, the pattern recommends having four balls of the lilac. So I was again preparing a whole basket, ready to buy more lilac because I was going to run out. But I did a bunch of math, like a bunch. I had a whole spreadsheet going about 
how many grams of yarn would a stripe take on the sleeve and on the body and the ribbing. I calculated so much and it turns out that I might just make it with those three balls of lilac. So that's what we're hoping to, to achieve now, is to not need a fourth ball. So I've obviously finished both sleeves now, so it's just a matter of seeing how many more stripes of li lilac I can do on the body with like basically two balls. And I think it should be fine. And then same for the white, I think I should be fine. And I really hope not to have to buy another ball of either of these because it's actually kind of rare to find a shop that stocks both the petite knit colors and then the non petite knit colors. Like some shops like Beautiful Knitters or, or No Frills Knitting, I think they only offer like one or the other. And it's just one ball that I need, but then I always end up purchasing more like to make the delivery costs worth it. So it's just, it's very dangerous if I run out of yarn because that just makes me buy more yarn than I need. I hope I'm not overexposed, by the way. Um, we just have to deal with whatever weather and conditions we're getting. I think sound has been okay. I'm so blessed not to have noisy neighbors because then it would be impossible to film every week. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this. Even though I made so much progress, it's a very simple pattern. Like. That's what you get with Petite Knit, I feel. It's just, I'm so used to her way of explaining the patterns and following it. You know what to expect. You know what's coming. She doesn't spend too much time on useless like explanations. And then the stuff that is trickier is very well explained. So even though I had never done a contiguous sleeve, by just following her instructions row by row, it worked out. And it was exhilarating. It was so fun. And I've been on the hunt for more patterns like this. I have heard of other patterns or designers that use the contiguous sleeve method. For example, there's one that I've just bought the pattern for. It's the Color Tip T by M. Weekert. I'll put a photo here. And then another pattern designer, I think, is Isabel Kramer. I think she does a lot of those. But let me know in the comments if you know of any other patterns or designers that use this method for sleeves. I've tried it on and it's such a good fit, like on the shoulder. It feels like something that you'd like get store bought that's not oversized. Like it's just the perfect amount that it espouses the shape of your shoulder perfectly. And I've chosen the size S for this because I, I did want like the ease and like the oversized sleeves and like it won't be cropped or anything. It's just going to be like a nice sweatshirt. And I'm loving the color combo that I went for. No regrets whatsoever. Like, I think it suits me quite well. I like this off-white. I don't like buying the same yarn twice, but this off-white kit from su Sunday is really, really good. The yarn is quite interesting being held double. I've used double Sunday before, which is the DK version of Sunday. And to be perfectly honest, I don't quite know what the benefit is of holding Sunday double as opposed to just holding double Sunday single. I don't think that they had Double Sunday in that purple color, but they had something similar. And I'm pretty sure that they have Double Sunday in kit. So let me know if you know what the difference is between just that and something double. I'm wondering if that one like lets more air in. Like, is it more breathable? Is it like more squishy? It, it recommends using the same size needle, so... For the neck... I think... Oh yeah, actually, for the neck. Um, like there's something that you have to do like to make it fold nicely. I'm not gonna say too much about it, but it looked weird. So I messaged uh, Petite Knit, like their team, to see if it was a typo, but it wasn't. So just like go with it and trust it. Uh, but then I did notice a typo for the amount of stitches you have to pick up. It said something like 150, but it was obviously 50. So there must've been a one being typed somewhere. I'm making up the numbers by the way. So they probably will have rectified this by the time that this video comes up. So you're welcome. Um, yeah, I think this will be done by the time I do the next video because I just have the body to do. I'm having to stop myself working on this too much and I have to instead work on the uh, color work test knit. But once the test knit is done, I will finish this. And I feel like my philosophy was kind of like, I want to work on what brings me joy and what I want to have as a finished item and there's always reasons not to do something like oh like it's a petite knit pattern or it just came out it's very trendy 
you just bought the yarn for it, but you have older yarn in stash, blah, blah, blah. There's so many reasons that I should do other projects first, but I really wanted to do this one. And I said to myself, it's my hobby. Like I have been working on this test net for so long and it's not bringing too much joy, like in my knitting time. So I want to have at least another project that is bringing 100% joy. And that again, I would know would be simple and easygoing and that there wouldn't be any like hiccups and I was right, there weren't any hiccups. It was just smooth sailing. It's DK weight, so it's like really fast. I didn't swatch for it because I knew I would get gauge. I usually do with petite knits. So yeah, that's my new favorite sweater construction design thing. And I highly recommend the Leon sweater by Petite Knits if you want to try some fun color combinations. The original was an almond and navy, but there's so many nice ones out there. Just have a look at the hashtag on Instagram. There's not been that many projects on Ravelry yet because it's so new, but uh, I can foresee this being a, a staple. Okay, the next thing is going to be a crochet work in progress. And as you can see here, I've got some plants in the background. I'm not like a huge plant fan. Like I, I used to be a bit more into them, but then I got more into knitting and I had less time to care for houseplants. And also th that can be an expensive hobby of its own, like houseplants. It's easy to get obsessed and like addicted to getting the next like pretty green thing so uh yeah i'm just keeping alive the ones i have and i'm not buying any new house plants all that to say that i'm going to be crocheting some house plants and i've recently found a free pattern to make a snake plant so i'll show you what i've got so far i'm pretty much like 75 percent done so got a little plant pot and some leaves so it's a free pattern so i'll talk about it freely you first make the plant pot and it's got like a nice little edge detail like that um flat bottom and what they recommend is that you take some cardboard and you cut the shape and you place it at the bottom for like sturdiness so i will be doing that then you stuff it and then what you do as well is you make a little like mud dirt soil top which I didn't have that color in worsted yarn, so I held DK double because I'm all I'm using all stash for this. And I'll put the pattern in the description below, by the way, if you want to do your own little snake plant. So I've done that and it fits perfectly on the plant pot. It's really satisfying like because it's got like the little lip edge. And then you make a bunch of leaves. And I think the pattern has you make 14 leaves how to make 10 leaves uh there's three different sizes there's small medium and large and then there's two different variations so that they don't all look the same so here's for example two small leaves which are different so the stripe sequence is different and the great thing about this pattern is that it literally tells you how to do the stripes like stripe by stripe which I think is so great because another free pattern might have just said here's how to do the general shape now do stripes as you want but I love following instructions and then you make the little edge in that lime color and then as you can see here there is wire in it so when you're doing that lime green border you're adding a wire and I've just added this like jewelry wire that I had from my crafty days it wasn't even big enough, so I, what I do is I, I take those two, two of them and then I twist them at the middle and then I use that. Uh, it's a bit time consuming, but it's so worth it. I don't even know what this would look like if it didn't have it. Like I've done the little things without the border and they just look so floppy and curled and everything, whereas the wire gives them so much structure, obviously, and you can like bend. You could bend the tip if you wanted, but I'm just going to leave it straight. So, so far I've done six leaves. I'm trying not to cut myself with the wires. Yeah, I'm really, really proud of them. I've weaved in the ends and cut them so it's like reversible, hopefully. But I'll make them all face the same, like right side, even though like, yeah, wrong side is also fine. And then what you do is you use the wire to like stick them in the soil and then you still use the long tails to sew them on se securely and then that's it and then you sew like you sew the soil in the plant pot 
So it's going to be very exciting to put it all together because the pieces are not taking too much time, but they're going to be fun to assemble. And I'm just happy that I went the extra mile, like adding the cardboard, adding the wire to just make this looking as neat as possible, because if not go big, like go home, you know, but this could be an easy project where you don't go through all the trouble. The original has like little eyes and a little mouth, like an amigurumi, like cutie character, but I'm going to skip that because I'm afraid that making eyes and a mouth would make it look less good. So just plain it is. So yeah, I, I ran out of steam a little bit. So I still have four more leaves to do and then I'll put it together. So I hope to be finished like by next episode. I don't want this to drag on for too long because it was just supposed to be a little palette cleanser in between projects, stash buster, free pattern, no stress, project. So yeah, the next work in progress is a pair of socks. I was saying before I was thinking of casting on something like with a ruffle maybe, but in the end I decided to use a pattern that I bought uh, a couple of months ago which is the fish lip kiss heel pattern. And this is a pattern that is just about the heel and it like you're supposed to just plug that into any other pattern. So you may have heard about this before, but if you haven't, it's just, yeah, like a, a cheap pattern. She, the designer says it's $1, but on Ravelry it appears as more expensive, but there's a code for it, I think in her Ravelry group that brings it down to a dollar. So do that little scavenger hunt for getting the pattern for cheaper. So it's a $1 pattern that tells you how to do the perfect heel that will fit any foot, blah, blah, blah. And the trick for that is that you, you draw a model of your foot onto some cardboard and then you do some math and you do some lines, blah, blah, blah. And then you cut it out and then you can use that foot model as like your template and you don't have to try it on your actual foot. And it can be really good for gifts then, because if you make your whole family like do that, then you don't need them anymore to make them sell gifts. I can't find my other one. I'll put a photo here of it being like all cut out. And the pattern advertises itself as being suitable for toe up or cuff down, but in my opinion, it's like 90% more suitable for toe up. And I usually make my socks cuff down. So it wasn't, important for me to make that cut out foot, I've realized now, but I have it for later. So uh, I will be trying to do more toe up socks because the reason I wouldn't do them before was because I would never know when to stop the foot and when to start the heel. So now I'm more confident that I can use that pattern with the cardboard cut out to be able to do that. But I still was able to use that pattern to make the heel on my cuff down. It just didn't matter when to start doing the, the heel. So here's what I've got so far. Oh, it's so cute. It's a West Yorkshire Spinner signature four ply in the colorway Robin. So it's that mix of colors and I'm using the colorway Poppy Seed for the contrast. And I've just made a one by one twisted rib cuff for like 12 rounds. Then I started making stripes and actually I thought that the leg would be longer because what I didn't realize was when you make the heel, you lose quite a bit of height here. So if I were to do that again, I would have done mine maybe like two stripes longer. But here I did eight. Maybe I would do ten next time. And I did the heel and then I'm doing the foot now. As you can see, it's quite pleasing as opposed to like the heel flap and gusset, which changes the whole shape of the um, sock when it's flat like that. This one doesn't, like you can just flip the heel like up or down, then it lays really, really flat. So it's been really satisfying to work on this. Uh, for the first time, I'm doing a vanilla sock on two millimeter needles with 56 stitches. So it's gonna, it seems really small for a lot of you, but I guess I'm a loose knitter. So the problem I have with this sock yarn, even though it's my favorite, is that usually it stretches out and then it ends up being baggy. And I really wanted these to fit me like a glove or like being a second skin for my foot. And so far, that's what I can tell. Like when I try these on, it's amazing how they hug and perfectly, again, espouses the shape of my foot. Like it's obviously like I can feel when I'm putting it on that I'm stretching it out and then it just like, just goes in perfectly. 
as opposed to the other one, which it just feels like I'm entering an, a bag that's already open. Does that make sense? So I'm really happy with my choice to to double down on like going smaller by not only going down the needle size, but also going down a stitch count. And I was talking to my friend Sam the other day about what I would do if I were to add some like ribbed texture to this, because then it would make it saggier. Maybe I would then add, I would remove a couple of stitches or four stitches. So instead of 56, I could maybe make the sock 52 stitches and add ribbing and those would even out and I would get the same fit. Because originally I was maybe wanting to make some uh, broken rib like this, uh, but I'm glad I didn't because I was trying out this new heel and I wasn't sure what I was doing with that. I'm happy that I didn't have any kind of patterning that would have been harder to keep in mind to not disrupt while doing the heel. So the only thing here that was a bit tricky was that I did my heel in a contrasting color, the gray, and the pattern doesn't actually tell you how to do the heel with the contrasting color, like where to, tr where to transition basically and where to pick it back up, which is annoying. The pattern came out nine years ago and I think the designer kept on saying that they would incorporate more elements in the pattern, like how to add an extra gusset for particularly large heels, how to change the color transitions and that they would make more patterns, but then they didn't. But they have a Ravelry group that has this huge thread of questions and answers, which again is like, I think there's a hundred pages on that group or a hundred pages on that Q and A thread. So good luck if you're looking after a particular answer, uh, but there is sort of a quick link you can access that tells you how to change the color. So the information is there somewhere, but not in the pattern, which is annoying. The other thing is that the pattern itself is 17 pages and honestly is not the most straightforward or clear. So, you know, like the pattern can ask you on Ravelry, like clarity rating. I think I put a three out of five because the information, the important information that you need is kind of scattered all across the pages. And it's just muddled with a lot of unnecessary information and fluff. Like some of it is information that some would consider important. So, but not me, but some of it is just really non-important information or like anecdotal like I don't think that that would have that that deserved a place in the pattern to be honest so all of those are my negative points about this it's a lot of fluff it doesn't actually matter that much for like the the cardboard doesn't matter for cuff down socks and but it's only a pound like a dollar and then the benefits of the pattern actually is like the actual method for this um cuff it's pretty much kind of like a short row heel, like it uses the same principle of, of doing some short rows and then doing some short rows like in reverse for the other side. The fun fact is the fact that it's reversible, so you can start from like the foot or you can start from the leg. And yeah, it's just like a nice little place for my heel to go into. The reason it's called fish lip kiss is because of this line like this that goes in is meant to be looking like this when you're doing the fish lip kiss thing. I don't know. And I've tried it on and it fits really well. I don't know if I'm gonna be blocking these socks because again, I don't need to stretch them out. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with these. I think they're gonna be like, cause I've got house socks in this yarn that I've made before, which are like a bit too large. So I'm really excited to have these that will suit me perfectly. Um, and then I'll be excited to be trying this fish lip kiss heel on toe up socks and also on socks that have some kind of pattern. Like for example, I'm thinking of using some patterns from the 52 weeks of sock book and just plugging in that heel pattern instead of what is recommended in the book. Or if I'm doing some color work, because an advantage of this heel pattern is that it doesn't disrupt the front of the foot whatsoever. Like if you look at the stripes, they're all the exact same length because when you're doing the heel flap and gusset and you have all those additional stitches, then your stripes are thinner because you have to go around more stitches and you can see that, that difference then when you're holding, like when you're having your foot at the front like that. So I will obviously try my best to not wait too long to cast on the next foot 
And these should be done fairly quickly because it's just stuck in that for so long. I'll also be trying to not make this too long, so I keep trying it on and I think I'm gonna stop earlier than I think I need to because I always end up like making it too long. So I'll stop before, make the toe and then having the negative ease in the length and also having negative ease in the width is just gonna make it like fit nicer. But obviously if you're like a regular knitter and not a loose knitter, don't take any of this advice from me because I know people have problems with putting their socks over their foot. I have never had that problem. All of my socks have been too big, so that's why I'm trying so hard to make them smaller. But um, especially with color work, be careful with your socks. But yeah, just happy to be learning a new heel technique. And I can see it being like easily memorable and like I'm not using a pattern for the vanilla sock. I'm just using like the stitch count and the heel. So those are super low maintenance, not a lot of stinking, just my new stockinette project. Okay, I think that's it for that project. So I think we're done actually with works in progress. Yeah, so we've got a lot of variety. We've got crochet, socks, a jumper, a color work fingering weight jumper. And now I will talk about my future plans and acquisitions and cast-ons. So I bought a couple of things recently. I talked about my plans for t-shirts and camisoles. So I wanted to show the yarn I bought for a couple of t-shirts that I'm gonna make very soon. But I won't go too much into detail about the project because I've been into detail in my previous videos. So for the Monica Geller tea by Sari Nordlin, I bought some Isiger Marilyn in this beautiful olive color. This is the perfect color for me. Like it's not too muted, it's not too vivid, it's not too dark. Like it's just a really nice medium green. I think Isiger is just so good at making good colors. I really like them. This is Marilyn and it's 80% uh, wool, 20% flax, 50 grams, 208 meters. I think it's a sport weight. And as you can maybe see, can you see kind of like the little, f like, not dust, but like there's a bit of flex on them? I think is linen. It feels quite weird to the touch. Like it's kind of um, not greasy. I don't think there's oil on it. I think it's the linen that makes it feel different than wool. Like it feels very treated. The same way that something superwash would be. Um... It definitely feels like totally soft and next to skin wearable, which is the goal for a t-shirt because I don't want to be wearing any t-shirt like with layers underneath, otherwise I'll overheat. I'm excited to see what this feels like, like with wool and linen, as opposed to something that doesn't have wool. I'm excited to see if I like working with it and if it's more comfortable for my fingers. I have three kinds of that and I'm in between two sizes for the t-shirt. So my plan is to swatch and then hopefully my swatch will be off gauge and then I can decide whether I should size up or size down. So my swatch will make the decision for me or, or of which size I need to do. The original is quite cropped as well and it's bottom up and I'm kind of wanting to maybe add a couple more centimeters of length. So what I might do is a provisional cast on just before the ribbing, do all the t-shirt and then with whatever amount of yarn I have left, continue down and then do some ribbing. Or I could just cast on normally and then at the end I could like slice the thing open and then add more length and then like Kitchener graft. So we'll see. I really want to use all the yarn like because I don't think I'm going to have many leftovers even if I did size 2. But if I did size 2 instead of size 3 I'm worried it's going to be too tight and not enough ease. But because it has wool maybe if, it, if I have something quite fitting it'll be like nice and flattering. So I don't know but I will be swatching with this very shortly. The next yarn I got is something that I've been wanting for so, 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 so long, but it was really hard to find the color I wanted in stock. And because the yarn is quite pricey, I didn't want to settle. I wanted what I wanted. And the yarn is Meadow by The Fiber Co. And it's a blend of llama, baby llama, silk, linen, and merino wool. And this is the colorway Prairie. And it's this gorgeous, gorgeous sort of golden wheat, um, like ochre color. It's like, I think I put it 
like I, I sorted it as a yellow on my Ravelry stash, but like it's more golden, like not caramel. It looks really nice. Like it's really soft. It's definitely really soft because of like the silk and the alpaca. And it also has like little flecks. You can definitely see it more on this as opposed to, yeah. Do you know what I was talking about? So I think that's linen because that's the content that they have in common with the Marilyn. And I'm, I guess it will wash away or maybe I can just like plug them. I hope it doesn't bother me too much like on the finished item. It doesn't bother me now on the skine or as I'll be knitting it, I'm sure it'll be fine. But I just hope it's not something that ends up shedding everywhere. But I'm super happy with the color. It definitely looked like that on the website. So I'm happy that it didn't disappoint <laughs> in that sense. And this is to make the Moonset Tea by Ozeta. It's fingering weight, so I think it'll take a while. What I was going for was drape because a lot of them are being made in the pure silk by knitting for olive. And I just wanted something a bit different because like, again, those colors are so hard to replicate. And like, I wanted to try meadow. So I bought two skines. I've already kicked one up, as you can see. I'm gonna be swatching for it. Basically, as I'm swatching for this, it'll be a little swatch party. And the other thing I've bought on the same like purchase, it was all from, from Tribe Yarns, by the way. Is something that surprised me to no end when it came in the mail and it's those cakes of Manchalopi my wool dreamers they are absolutely massive <laughs> and that color is gorgeous isn't it I really went kind of out of the comfort zone because they don't have that many colors they have basically like six or seven neutrals in all varying degrees of like darkness to lightness and then they have a couple of colors and I could have gone for a neutral and I was hesitating between like a medium gray or a dark gray and then I was just like everything else I own is already shades of gray and like brown and I've recently discovered how much I like this pistachio mint green so I thought I'd get the green and I'm, I'm glad I did it looks beautiful it's a unspun yarn and it's really soft it doesn't feel itchy or scratchy or it feels a little rough like dry but not itchy it's gonna be tricky not to break it I can already tell it's like very fragile the way that you do with those is I think it's it already comes in two strands so like you hold it you hold it double yeah I think it already comes in two strands and you can hold it double or you can separate it and do it single but the pattern I'm going to do with this is the Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta, and I'm going to hold it double, so just as it comes. And three plates is enough for one whole cardigan, can you believe that? Because those weren't expensive, I think it was um, eight pounds, 750 or eight for one plate. So like, yeah, so this entire thing cost me 26 pounds. 26 pounds for a light as a cloud cardigan in a beautiful color. That's amazing. So I haven't knitted with that yet, obviously, but when I do, I will tell you if I recommend this affordable Menchalopi yarn. But I just wanted to show how big it is and like, oh, it's, it's so cute. I don't know if that will be soon. I'm really into making cardigans, but I've already cast on another cardigan. So that will be my next cardigan. And I will show you now. It's yarn that I've had uh, in stash since January. It was a, a gift for Christmas. It was uh, the Studio Donegal, Soft Donegal. This is like the mid medium gray colorway. It has like little beige, white and rust specks of like flex for the, the tweed. And I was gonna make the Highland Slipover by Ozetta, but I was way off gauge. Like it, it was gonna end up way, way, way too large. This is like a sport, uh, this is a worsted way, I think, or like it acts like one anyway. So what I've decided to do is to make a bonnie cardigan by um, Ted Besh or Orlan Zook. And I love her designs. They're really, really nice. People have been raving about her. Like I've heard nothing but amazing glowing reviews. I've bought a few of her patterns because you get like a discount if you buy four at once. She recently released uh, a nice little like vest, the cameo vest, which I also really want to do. And I think I have yarn in stash for it. I'll be playing yarn chicken, but but that's what I do. But because I had the yarn in stash, I was really happy that I, I had enough to make this bunny cardigan by Orlan. And I've just casted it on now. I've done like a bit of the yoke. So there's really nothing to, there's not much to show. Ooh. 
But yeah, basically it'll just be... It's a simple raglan uh, that you just keep making the increases and then pick up for the button band. But it's a really beautiful pattern. I'll talk about it more in the next podcast, but it has lots of little interesting details that like it doesn't look like it at first, but then you realize like there's there's a few interesting things about it. And it's made using worsted weight yarn. So I'm using 4.5 needles, but normally you're making it on five millimeter needles. So it's hopefully a quick, satisfying project. Lots of people have made it in uh, the Rerum Natura Gilead, which is a also a woolen spun. The Studio Donegal is also woolen spun, so it's going to be very like lofty and a bit lighter than if it was worsted spun. And then the very last plan that I want to do is to make a camisole. I've mentioned before that the next one I would do was probably the square neck camisole, and I'm going to be using the knitting for Olive Merino. This is Nordic Beach, which is like a nice neutral that's like kind of tinging on, on grey more than beige. So like a nice contrast with my skin colour. My only dilemma is I've just realised I've got three balls of this, but I think I could get away with just making the camisole with two. And I really don't like having an extra ball. So maybe I might save this colour for a cami that requires three balls. And then find something else to make the square camisole with. Um, I was thinking of not really swatching and just going for it because it's ribbing and it has lots of negative ease. But then, I don't know, because I have it in stash, like I should just go for it. I don't want to buy two balls of knitting for Olive because again, I'll end up going crazy and like increasing the basket. So I think I might just cast on and if I have one extra ball of it, that could be a nice color for a stripe uh, for another summer top, because a lot of the summer tops coming out right now, they're striped, aren't they? That's all I have to say. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of plans. I've been a busy bee behind the scenes. Like I've been knitting a lot this week, obviously, but I've also been planning a lot. Even though I've been knitting on the same projects, I've been thinking about all the projects that I want to do when my needles are clear and as you can see they're quite summery and and nice like nice fiber contents with linen it's been a really exciting time to to be trying out those those new yarns i'm so excited and so happy to have access to so many interesting yarn combos and colorways and like there's so many nice shops in the uk so feeling very grateful and very inspired it can be easy to be a bit overwhelmed with like all the possibilities but having thought out all of my next projects and like settled on like the next cami, the next t-shirt, the next cardigan helped me refocus and recenter. So, and also having the podcast is a good way to set goals and continue on following them. Like if I'm showing some yarn in an episode and then I show it as a swatch in the next episode and then as a work in progress afterwards, like it's nice for the continuity and to not get too all over the place. So yeah. Um, I was always very tired after speaking for an hour. It is a bit draining to get all of this out there, but it's kind of cathartic and satisfying to have said everything that was brewing in my mind for two weeks. Uh, I don't know what the next video will be. I don't really have an idea yet, but I'll probably see you for another podcast in two weeks. A lot of things will have been finished then, hopefully like the sock, the test knit, the crochet, and I'm really excited to see like the, the, the future t-shirts going on because it's been warmer here in Scotland and I've only got one t-shirt that I've made, the palm of tea from a couple episodes ago. So I need more t-shirts in the, in the wardrobe for when Scotland finally decides to play game and act like it's May and June. I hope you have a wonderful time wherever you are. Hope that this video was enjoyable to watch, that you got some progress on your project if you were knitting along. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything that inspired you in this podcast or any thoughts on any of the projects that I've made or mentioned. And I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone, happy knitting.